What's up, Kyle Kang with Magistatics? So let's solve this problem. So we have these three forces acting on this bolt, and we want to find the force of P so that when we find the resultant force of all three of the forces, it's equal to 800 pounds. So really quickly, in the book, it says 800 newtons here, but everything else is given in pounds. So I went ahead and changed this to 800 pounds. I'm assuming the book made a mistake. Maybe the book didn't make a mistake. Uh, but you can solve this a different way by converting this 800 newtons to 800 pounds, or to whatever amount of pounds it is first, and solving it the same way, if you think that's not a mistake. But I'm going to just go ahead and solve it with 800 pounds. So let's go ahead and solve this. So when we want to find a resultant force, which is what we're trying to do, we want to find the resultant force. We want to add all three of these forces up, but because they're all vectors and they're acting in different directions, we need to write them as vectors before we add them. So we need to turn each of these into vectors in the Cartesian plane, that is to say, in the x and y direction. So let's first of all start by just turning these into three different vectors. So we have a hundred pound, or a thousand pounds, acting in this three, four, five triangle in quadrant two. So we're going to convert that to a vector. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's label this force one, uh, which is the thousand pounds. So we want to convert it into its x and y components. So its x component is pushing in the negative direction. So we're going to need to attach a negative to its x component. Then we're going to take the magnitude of it, 1,000 pounds, so negative 1,000, but not all 1,000 is acting in the x direction. What we're given is that it acts at this 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now if we look at this triangle, the ratio of it acting in the x direction is 3 fifths, because the 3, 4, 5 triangle has a base of 3 and a hypotenuse of 5. So all we need to do is multiply it by 3 fifths, and then attach our i hat to it to get the i direction. So that is, the, that is the i component of it. Now, our y component is in the positive y direction because we're in quadrant two, so we're gonna add 1,000 pounds. Then we're gonna multiply it by four fifths. The reason we're doing four fifths is because the ratio of the y, the height of the triangle to its hypotenuse, is four to five, so four fifths j. So this is gonna give us that force one as a vector is equal to negative 600 i plus 800 j pounds. So that's our first force. Let's go ahead and find the 400 pound force. So we're going to do force two, right, is equal to, so let's look, it's in quadrant three, so we're going to have a negative x and a negative y component. So we're going to start by doing the x component, so we're going to do negative 400, and then what we need to attach, well now we have an angle, we're hitting 30 degrees and we're not at a triangle. So if we want to finish this, we can write it as a right triangle. And what we're looking for is the x direction, which is adjacent to 30 degrees. And remember, so Katoa, if we're looking for adjacent, we're going to use cosine, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So same thing, cosine 30 is giving us a ratio of the x component to the hypotenuse. So that's why we're just going to attach a cosine of 30 to get the i component. Now if we want the j component, the y component, we're looking at this side here, which is the y, it's in the negative, so we're going to subtract 400, and then we're looking for the one, the side length opposite to the angle, so opposite is we use sine, so 400 sine of 30 j. All right, so then we're going to plug that in, and this is going to give us negative 346 i minus 200 j pounds. So here are our two forces. Now what is P? Well, P, we can write as this. Let's just say force three is equal to, it's only acting in the x direction, so it's just gonna have a positive P i component plus zero j. And we don't know what that P is yet because we're trying to solve for that. So these are our three forces. So if we want the force resultant, we're just gonna add them together. So we can say force resultant which is just denoted with an R, is equal to force one plus force two plus force three. So we're gonna add up all the I components, so it's gonna be negative 600 minus 346 plus P I, so this is all the I component, and we're gonna add it to the J component, so it's gonna be plus 800 minus 200 J. After we solve for this, we get negative 946 plus p i plus 600 j. Cool. So this is our first resultant in vector form, but we want to find it in 
um, magnitude form because we're looking for the resultant force magnitude is equal to 800 pounds. This is giving us magnitude, not a vector. So we need to find out what the magnitude of this is. So to find magnitude, we are going to do the Pythagoras theorem, right? We know a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So if we're looking for the magnitude of the force resultant, which is what these bars, we're going to take the square root of the i component, so negative 946 plus p squared plus this, this the y component, 600 squared. All right, so we have this equation here. But what do we want? We want force resultant to be 800 pounds. So let's set 800 equal to all of this. Now what we're going to do is let's square both sides to get rid of the square root to get negative 946 plus p squared plus 600 squared. Then let's solve this. Let's move the 600 over to get 800 squared minus 600 squared is equal to negative 946 plus p squared. Then we can take the square root of both sides to cancel this squared. So we're going to get the square root of 800 minus 600 squared, which this gives you a plus or minus. Remember, if we do the square root of both sides, we have to take plus or minus. So once we do this, we're getting plus or minus 529 is equal to negative 946 plus p. Okay, so then we have two situations. We either have a plus or we have a minus. So let's do the plus. If we have the plus 429, we're going to have 529 plus 946 is equal to p. And that gives us that p is equal to 1,475 pounds. So that's one situation. But remember, we have this plus or minus. So we have two situations. Let's look at the minus. So if we have minus, we have negative 529 plus 946 is equal to p. And we do that, we get that p is equal to 417. And so those are two answers for p. So if you plug in either of these answers for p, we're going to get the same force resultant of 800 pounds. So that's how you solve this problem. Not too tricky. It's just about knowing how to do these, breaking out into vectors and adding them together. So thank you for watching. Uh, check out my statics playlist for more videos from the same book. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.